said, somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. In the room, are you out of praise him? In overflow, somebody praise him. At home, somebody praise him. Yes, Lord. Our answer is 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 yes, Lord. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But they said something that half your role missed. Because they haven't been through half of what you've been through. She said, I still praise you. Now your neighbor don't know why you sound like that. They don't know you had a reason to throw in the towel. But you woke up this morning and said, God, I still praise you. I wish I had a thousand folks that would just shout. Sorry, that messed me up right there. I, that messed me up right there. In spite of what's been done to me, in spite of what I lost, in spite of my own mistakes, my response is I still. I wish I had somebody with a steal in your spirit that can say, God, I haven't been perfect, haven't made all the right decisions, but as long as I got breath in my body, I got 10 folk in the room who fight and run into this altar right now. Because you like, Pastor Mike, they don't have a clue what it took for me to get here today. There she go. They don't have a clue what it took for you to get here today. But devil, you are a liar. I decree and declare that the spirit of the living God is about to fall fresh on this house. I dare somebody to give God a fresh worship. A new praise. Shout unto God with the voice of There it is. There it is. There it is. I need your praying for a thing. I need your prayer. Try 
y'all missed it. You seen me through. That that right there should have messed you up. Cause if it means he seen me through it, either he was guiding me or he was watching me. My my he was guiding me. Did you catch that? He seen me through it. So either as you were going through, he was ahead of you moving stuff. He was ahead of you blocking stuff. You sitting in here like you got you that job. He saw you through it. Like sickness couldn't have took you out. He saw you through it. I'm going to give you 30 seconds in overflow, online, in the room. Shout that he saw you through it. I don't know why in my spirit I can literally see a bill in a purse I, I don't know who you are I can literally see the bill in your purse if you got enough boldness I need you to bring it to me God said I'm shifting and breaking some stuff off of y'all today yep there it is I see God moving some stuff today literally the bill is in your purse you've been carrying it around trying to figure out what you gonna do with it? Where you at? Right there. Where you at? Where you at? Is that who is that? I need you. Where is that right? Is that the bill right there? Let me have it. Give it to me. Give me. The, I felt that in my spirit. Is that you? Bring it. Is it? Come here. Give it here. It's all right. In Jesus' name, the devil. Is, can I open it? Is it okay if I open it? You, you, you didn't open it. I'm open. You brought it to me. In Jesus' name, devil, you are a liar, devil. You are a liar, devil. You are a liar, devil. You are a liar. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's done. Where'd she go? Where'd she go? We're not stressing about that. That's done in Jesus' name. That's done in Jesus' name. That is done in Jesus' name. That is done. Y'all don't even know when to shout. That's done in Jesus' name. I serve a God that does exceeding and abundant above whatever it is you can ask or think. You ought to just shout, in my life, it's done. It's done. What the devil meant for evil. God shaking it. God shifted it. And that's why you're here. The devil seeks to sift you like wheat. The text says, I prayed for you. Ooh. I pray for you, Amber. That this is the day something's being lifted. Yep. Something's being lifted right now. In Jesus' name, something's being lifted right now. In Jesus' name, something's being lifted right now. In Jesus' name, something's being lifted right now. That's done, Candace. In Jesus' name, something's being lifted right now. No, we're not just going to be a church that pray for people. God put you in this earth to be a miracle to somebody. Y'all miss what I, y'all miss what I just said. It's done. It's done. It's done. Doctors visit Tuesday. We finna touch and agree with you today. I don't know who that is, but I see a doctor's visit this Tuesday. We're touching and agreeing that it's already done. We claiming healing right now. It's already done. You don't need me to just lay hands on you. You ought to just shout somebody in my section touch and agree with me right now. I don't know who you sitting next to, but if you got any type of Jesus in you, I need you praying right now that God's getting ready to do exceeding, abundant, above. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. 
That's what it is. Okode masore basha. That's what it is. Yeah. It's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I'm never going to be a slave to programs. Every time God show up, I'm getting out the way. This is why people are giving up on God. We're too big on production. I want power. I want to feel the manifested presence of God. It's not about crowds. It's not about being mega. It's about getting back to when grandmama had Terry in service. And we would pray and touch and believe. Grandmama didn't have big words. Grandmama didn't have a doctorate degree. But she knew how to say Jesus. 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 I wish I had a hundred folk who would just say the name Jesus. I wish I had a thousand people who would type the name Jesus. I wish I had somebody at Overflow who would just shout Jesus. 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 It's okay. That's okay. Da 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 so. That's okay. Ooh. That's okay. That's okay, Brenda. I don't know why I felt that name in my spirit, but that's okay. That's okay, Brenda. I don't know why I heard that name in my spirit, but that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. It's okay. Today is what they consider Palm Sunday, and I, I had my message planned. <clears throat> this is the Sunday where Jesus rides into town. Whew. This is important, my brothers and sisters, because tomorrow he rides in and everybody yells, Hosanna. I'm going to preach to this side. On Monday, they yell, Hosanna. <laughs> On Friday, they shout, crucify him. You better stop living for people's praise. Listen to me. If you live for their praise, you'll die from their rejection. Did you hear what I just said? If you live for their praise, you'll die from their rejection. And this is for three of y'all that if don't nobody ever congratulate me, long as God is pleased with me. Matter of fact, I need you to look at your neighbor and tell them I can't high five you right here. I'm a high five myself and say I'm proud of me. After what I've been through, I'm still standing. After what I've been through, I still got my right mind. The old me would have cussed you out, cut you, went crazy, but God kept me in perfect. Hear me. Hear me. He rides in on Palm Sunday. He rides in today, not Monday. On Sunday, he rides in on Palm Sunday. They would take palm leaves and wave them before him. But the scripture says, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, on, listen to your pastor, on the Mount of Olives. That, that's enough right there. They come on the Mount of Olives. You, you don't understand it. The anointing oil comes from the olive. That's where you get olive oil. Watch this. But they don't go to the Mount of Oil. They go to the Mount of Olives, which means they're surrounded by oil, 
it's only one problem. It hasn't been crushed. And six of y'all can't figure out why it feels like God has you in a season where life is just squeezing all the peace and all the joy and all the... God says, I'm crushing you because I'm trying to get something out of you. And you spent so much time running from me. Ain't no running in this season. I need your anointing. I need your story. I need your testimony. And the oils, <clears throat> the olive is crushed. Because when the olive submits to the crushing, the anointing is produced. And he says, Jesus goes to his disciples. He sent two disciples. What does he tell them? The scripture tells us, he says to them, go to the village ahead of you. And at once, you will find a donkey tied there. Her colt by her. Let me paint the picture. He says, when you get to the next city, you're going to see a donkey. You're going to see her baby right next to her. Untie them and bring them to me. <clears throat> this critical. Now, I need you to leave that scripture right there. It was prophesied that the Messiah would return. Let, let me free you real quickly. Most people thought that he would come back looking like a soldier with armor on, with a knife on a mighty horse looking like a knight in shining armor yet Jesus says I'm not coming back on a horse Michael I'm coming back on a donkey it's critical he says Mike if I told them to go to the city to get a horse any horse in a city has been tamed he says I don't want to send the message that I can only use stuff that's been tamed mm. He said, go find me the most stubborn, hard-headed individual in the city and watch what I do with him. That ain't for everybody. It's only for three of us who've been hard-headed, who done ran from God, who know God calling you, but you still want to do your own thing. God said, get ready because this is the season. I'm getting ready to use the very person that folk don't think is qualified. He says, this is what I want you to do. Go find that donkey. Watch this. Her baby going to be right next to her. I hope seven of y'all can receive this. And he says something to them that I think everybody misses. He says, and it's on the screen, untie them. I'm finna run. I'm sorry. It's baby dedication Sunday and this ought to bless your spirit. He says, untie them. Now, James, I said this wrong at the 9 o'clock. I want to fix it at the 11.30. Because I told you Jesus rode in on a donkey. Here's what I should have explained better. Jesus didn't ride in just on a donkey. He rode in on the donkey's baby. Y'all missed it. He rode in on the colt. He didn't use the mama. He used the baby. But why did he untie the mama? Because he realized if I didn't break the curse off of mama, the baby never would have followed. So since I'm going to do something in your child's life, I got to break it off your life first. I need every parent to shout that he's breaking something off of my family's life. Poverty's being broken. Anxiety's being broken. Death's being broken. Low self-esteem being broken. You ought to shout for your bloodline. Well, Cordy, I dare you to shout your children's name. I dare you to shout your grandchildren's name. Michael, Xander, Mason, McKinley, Miles. It's being broken off of them right now. I wish I had a parent who would just praise God for every one of your children. Devil, you are a liar. Devil, you are a liar. Devil, you are a liar. Loose up and let us go. He gotta let you go. He gotta let you go. He gotta let you go. I want to speak by faith. That the very prayer that you've been praying over your kids, 
God's going to do it in you first. Y'all miss what I just said? Y'all miss what I just said? Watch this. If God didn't free the parent, and if he only untied the baby, the baby would have been fighting to go because she would have been scared. But God, in his infinite wisdom, knew the quickest way to get the child to be obedient is for it to see mama coming with me. I don't know who I'm preaching to in here. I don't know who I'm preaching to in here. I don't know who I'm preaching to in here. I said, I don't know who I'm preaching to in here. I'm going to be debt free and my children going to be debt free. I'm going to be whole and my children going to be whole. I'm going to be anointed and my children going to be anointed. I need you to touch certain people and tell them anointing, 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 anointing. It's getting ready to happen. I said, it's getting ready to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need some up here, Jay. I need some up here, Jay. I don't know if you sit next to your child, but I dare to lay hands on your baby and say, devil, you are a liar. I said, devil, you are a liar. My family's blessed. My children are blessed. My grandchildren blessed. My great-grandchildren blessed. My great 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 grandchildren blessed. My last name blessed. My bloodline blessed. What was that emotion? Yep. 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 I see another principle. God is about to use the baby, but he had to free the mama. This is for six of y'all that your relationship with your parents ain't been the best. God said because of the favor on your life, I'm getting ready to fix that relationship that I'm anointing you to be the one that's about to shift your family's bloodline. I don't need you to shout for a house or a car, but I need you to shout that your family's whole, that your family's reunited. says when you get to the city you're gonna find a donkey tied there I didn't see this at the first service I ain't see this at the first service let me tie you to this post you can walk around free you can walk around free what if they got to the city and saw donkeys what if they got to the city James and saw donkeys and thought to themselves, this is a donkey, but it's missing one prerequisite. It ain't tied up. Y'all miss what I just said. And you keep thinking something's wrong with you because it looked like your circle has more freedom than you. What if God got you tied up on purpose? Because he realized, let them think they free. Freedom ain't the ability to do whatever you want. Freedom is when you can do what you want and you choose to do what he wants. Am I preaching to anybody in here who can say I could go out whenever I want to? I chose to stay home because I want God to use me. He says, watch this, untie them. And he says, Watch this. The disciples never asked this question. I'm sending you home. They must have had a look on their face that was confused. Because he looks at them in the next verse and says, if anyone <laughs> say something to you, tell them the Lord needs them. Watch this. And he will send them <laughs> right away. I, I don't know who I'm preaching to in here. But you don't spend too much of your life explaining to people who ain't got no right to ask you nothing. No. He says, no, I want to make this very clear. Make this very clear. Well, why are you moving like that? The Lord needs me. 
Why you don't come around no more? The Lord needs me. What God's getting ready to do, not just in my life, but in the life of those connected to me. Sometimes you got to disconnect from people you used to be around. But I just need you to snake some stuff off of you. And shall every soul tie, every toxic connection is coming off of me, right? Yeah! Yeah! And look what he says. He says, he says, I can only use this donkey. It's stubborn. It's wild. It's unpredictable. But it's submitted. Submitted. And here's a word that's been abused in church. Not just abused in church, it's been abused in marriage. It's been abused on workplaces. This word, Sean, has been abused by so many people, and the word is called submission. So whenever you hear submission, you automatically think you have to be weak. Watch this. But submission is the bridge between your calling and completion. Michael. Some of us don't like submission because we submitted to the wrong person. That's for seven of my sisters in the room who know you could be a good wife, but you gave wife privileges to somebody who didn't understand who you were. And they abused you and took you for advantage. So now here it is, God's getting ready to send you something new. And you get afraid because you don't want to submit just because. Fellas, I'm tough. I'm a man. I ain't bound down to nothing. Any brother, any sister, any leader who will not be submissive will be abusive when in authority. Submission is the bridge between your calling and completion. Come here, James. You missed it. He don't know what I want. He don't know if he in trouble. He don't know if he about to be blessed. All he got was a call. Y'all missed it. And because he submitted, I don't need the details. Not because I'm confused, but because I know the one who made the call. Am I preaching to anybody in here? And many of you keep missing God. But you won't give them submission. But what I need you to understand, Leslie, is that what God's doing in your life, God's shifting some stuff in your life. He's moving some things in your life. But in this season of your life, what is he saying to you, Pastor Mike? He's trying to get you to realize you will only be as strong as you are submitted. I had to check a young pastor. He called me and said, Pastor Mike, I'm going to be just like you. I ain't going to have nobody to answer to. I'm going to be in charge. I'm going to be able to make whatever this. I said, that's not what I do. I said, I'm submitted. I talk to people before I make a decision. I said, I'm just out here do whatever I want to do. It may look like that. I said, even when it come down to post and stuff, sometimes if I feel like it may be too much, I call my pastor. Pastor, here's what I'm feeling. This really touched my heart. This is what I want to say. And if he looks at me and says, Mike, no, nah, let that go. Guess what happens? I let it go. See, don't tell me who you over so you can show me who you under. <laughs> Am I preaching to anybody? 40 years old and to this day. Hey, dad, where you at? One of the boys did so-and-so, so-and-so. I think I'm finna go crazy. Nah, Mike, let that go. You did the same thing. He just finding himself, all right, I'm submitted. And submission is not restriction. Submission is actually protection. Do me a favor, just stand right there. But now you see other people moving. Somebody just posted they engaged. Somebody just posted they moving to another city. Somebody just posted it's up. I just got so-and-so. And now you and your feelings because you on a pause. When you don't realize God who's ahead of you. See, that ain't none of that stuff going to last. So he tells you, he restrict, he, he asks you to submit, not for your restriction, but for your protection. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to your own understanding. 
In all thy ways, submit to him. Ignite, submit. And what is he going to do? Hear me. Hear me. There is something so special that God wants to do. But it's going to require your submission. There are three things that come with this level of submission. Three things that come with this level of submission. Number one, you have to elevate your standards. You have to elevate your standards. I need you to say this with boldness. I am the standard. You miss what I just said right there. You ought to shout, I am the standard. Listen to your pastor all over the world in this room. We cannot expect God's strength if we don't embrace God's standards. Have you ever seen somebody who had like one of those bodies you would want? I saw a guy yesterday, I was like, man, he ripped. And I looked him up and I was like, man. And I asked him, I'm not a hater. I said, man, how you get like that? Oh, he said, man, I'm on the 5 a.m. crew. Every morning at 5 a.m., we getting it. No sodas, no sugars, nothing white. He don't eat nothing white, no bread, no nothing. I said, like, oh, okay. <laughs> I went and got some Wendy's right after that. Like, God bless you, my brother. Had he asked me, how you get this? Wendy's, Chick-fil-A. But you know what? I like what he had. The problem isn't that I can't get it. It's am I willing to submit to the standard? Y'all don't like me today. And what I'm trying to get you to realize, not only should God be the source of your strength, he should also be the source of your standard. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise. What if all hell breaking loose in your family and God is like, it's cool because once it run up on you, it's going to see you are. Number two, I need you to embrace your stops. I'm going to ask you a question. I need you to hear me. What do you need to take off? so you can take off. Can I ask you that again? What do you need to take off so you can take off? What do you need to stop now in order for God to start next? The donkey could not be effective as long as he was entangled. The first thing God says is before I ride you, I have to release you. Have you ever traveled, got to the counter, and your bag weighed too much? You get mad at the lady at the counter because she got a standard. She like, look, it ain't personal. We have a standard. If your bag weigh more than this, it can't come. Now, if I make a shortcut for you and make a shortcut for her and this plane go down, I'm going to be in trouble because I didn't uphold so she says, I'm so sorry, but if you want to fly, you're going to have to get rid of some of your baggage. It's some stuff and some people you got to take out your life. Hear me. Number three, examine your submission. Submission is not a loss of freedom. It's a protection of freedom. When the donkey submitted to Jesus, it was able to go places it had never gone before. Like that donkey, there are so many places that Jesus wants to take our lives, but our past does not want to let us go. I don't know about you, but I got to get out of here. What if your stuckness in one area is tied to your lack of submission in another area? I'm submitted. And everybody in this room, everybody watching me in overflow, everybody watching online, listen to your pastor. I know I'm supposed to give you that message that makes you want to go start a business. What's the use if you ain't going to be, if the business not submitted? Last night, 
I performed in Tallahassee, Florida. The Clark sisters performed, Ja'Kalen Clark performed. At 10 o'clock at night, outside in the amphitheater, I performed. I finished hugging everybody. I finished at 10.50. They took me to the van. All these kids wanted to meet me. I get out the van, hug every child, took all the pictures they wanted. By this time, it's 11.30. I get back to the hotel, change clothes. It's 12.10. 12.30, T, Manda, we get in the van. All of us, it ain't just Pastor Mike, me, Terrell, Manda, Daniel over there on the drums. We get in the van, Daryl, Steven, get in the van, and we get in a little chair in the van, and we all ball up in the corner. Six hours later, it's probably five something, we pull up outside, go home, take shower, come stand before you. We ain't up here... Hey, God bless you. You want to know why? How you going to pray for something and then complain about what it takes when you can just say, God, no matter what it takes, I'm submitted. Am I preaching to anybody? And what I'm trying to get you to realize is submission, brother, submission don't mean you weak. Submission in your life may need to be, hey, Baby girl, I'm telling you, you know what my issue is, so this is what we're going to do. When I get off work, I'm calling you first. When I get ready to do so-and-so, I'm calling you first. Don't hold that over my head. I'm giving you an opportunity to help me become the man that's God calling me to be. I'm realizing in this area of my life, I need somewhere to submit. I submit my life. I submit my business. I submit my finances. I don't, hear, hear me, if my son decides to play another sport, he don't make that decision. Have you prayed about it? Let's talk to God. Pastor Mike, you're being too deep. What if it's somebody on that team in that locker room that will potentially introduce him to drugs? It ain't just a sport, it's a decision. Every decision has people. Every person has an agenda. Every agenda sometimes is motivated either by God or by the devil, which means before anybody do anything, I gotta talk to God. And what I'm telling you now as we get ready to leave, what if God is ready to unlock everything you've been praying for, but he's only going to do it at the speed of your submission? It's real simple. I'm submitting. Grandmama said it like this, she said, Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do, that's submission. If you say do, use me, Lord, to show something and enable me to say can you just slip a hand in the air right there and say my story is empty and I my storage my story my storage is empty my storage is empty And I am to Every head bowed Right now God I pray a prayer of repentance and submission God not for the places I sin We all sin We will be praying that every day Today, God, I pray for repentance for the areas of my life that I have not submitted. I don't pray like I should because my prayer life isn't submitted. I haven't been tithing because my finances aren't submitted. I don't treat people the way I should treat them. Yes, I got a reason to tell people certain stuff, but at this point, God, I'm making it too personal. I should have a heart of forgiveness, so that means my attitude ain't submitted. So right now in the name of Jesus, from the pastor to the last person in this room and in the stream, we repent publicly. 
We repent, God, for the places we moved outside of your will. We repent for when we had righteous indignation, yet we should have stayed still. We repent, God, for every time we did something and didn't pray. But as of this day forward, God, we submit to your will. We submit to your word. We submit to your way. God, Grandmama said, guide me, O thou great Jehovah. I'm just a pilgrim through this barren land. I get weak. I get tired. But her commitment was so strong, she said, I'm a hold to God's unchanging hand. So, God, I thank you right now. God, I pray that this generation, especially the next generation, sees that loving God ain't corny. Loving God, God ain't whack. Loving God is still the most powerful thing I have ever done. It is the most powerful thing that I have ever done. I pray, God, that a generation would return to you more gifted, more talented, more savvy, more anointed, but also more submitted. For the Bible said each generation gets wiser, but also gets weaker. So this generation has AI, so they don't have to study. They have Google, so they don't have to study. God, don't let that impact our level of submission and dedication to you. God, I thank you for being God. I thank you for looking beyond our faults and meeting us at all of our needs. I thank you just for being who you are. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say it. Clap your hands if you love Jesus. Come on, church. Clap your hands. Stand to your feet with me. Who feels like God's getting ready to do something special in your life? You see that? He's getting ready to do something special in your life. Listen to me. I want to say this to you before you leave. You are in a very unique season. You are in a very unique season where your level of obedience and submission will determine the next two seasons of your life got to be locked in and trust what God is doing. I believe that. And I'm going to just be bold and I'm going to be crazy. Whatever you want to say, I see you in the future. And you look a whole lot better than you do right now. Somebody shout amen. Listen, I mean this. I want to thank you guys for worshiping with us. One more time, can we praise God for all the families that dedicated their children? We love y'all. We love y'all so much. Please don't forget to stop by the room. Elder Tristan and his team is in there. We have some stuff for you guys. We love you so much. Listen, next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. Are y'all excited about that? Listen, we're having 1130 service at the Boutwell Auditorium. Let me kind of be candid with you guys about some things that's happening. This church was abandoned for years, right? All right, so we sit on Valleydale Road, which is a busy road. But behind us is an entire neighborhood. So the growth that our church has um, has scared some of the neighbors, you know, um, the traffic or whatever's going on. Um, that's why I try my best to ask you guys, if you don't mind, I want to be a good steward. And I never want my good to be evil spoken of. Um, so if you don't mind, I know traffic sometimes is bad. But when you come out the parking lot, don't go through the neighborhood. On Sundays, there are people walking. There's kids playing in the front yard. And in three minutes, not going to make up for us making a mistake, hitting a child or running over a ball or something like that. Um, we had a couple neighbors. I had to go before the planning commission in Shelby County or whatever. Uh, and they expressed some of their concerns. And it's cool. Um, I told them, I said, listen, whatever we got to do to be a good neighbor, that's what we're going to do. Uh, I don't want them to think that Valleydale Road just got busy when we got here. Um, but at the same time, to each his own, uh, they shared a lot of concerns with us. They also said uh, they didn't want us to have a DJ outside. The noise was disturbing the whole neighborhood. Uh, how from the front of the building to the back of the, I don't know, but yes, ma'am. Um, they also asked me to tell all my members not to have their radios playing when they come down. I'm like, well, you got to tell everybody on Valley Dell. Whatever it is, I, that's not my concern. My concern is I want to make sure that I exemplify to you guys that even in situations where you don't feel wrong at all, that does not justify you acting a fool. You have to still remain submitted and be a good representation. I don't want to embarrass you guys. I don't want to get in a meeting and lose it. Then they say, today on Fox 6, local pastor cuts up. Now you got to go on Facebook and say, I'm going to stick beside him. I'm going to stick beside him. I'm going to stick beside him. No, 
So do me this favor uh, when you leave. And let me be clear, even if you turn left, it's not a shortcut. You're going to go through, it's a circle. All you're going to do is be in more traffic on the other side. So if you don't mind, we're going to do all, like, all we can to keep helping with this traffic. But I said that to say next week is Easter, and I just didn't want to get his neighborhood a, a nervous breakdown. Somebody opened their door. It's more of them. So, <laughs> they're coming from everywhere. I didn't want to do that again. Okay. I didn't want to do that. So here's, what, here's the plan for Easter. If you're watching online and in the room, next Sunday I'm doing two services at the Boutwell. If we do one service, it's going to be crazy, and it's just going to be packed again. Hear me when I say this. This is so funny, but I'm going to say it. I don't like packed church. Like, I like, like if I had it my way, I would go to the 8 o'clock service with 200 people. All right, but here's what we're going to do. I'm going to have two services at the Boutwell so you can pick from. 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. I'm asking you to bring your kids. I'm spending a lot of money on this because I want our children to fall in love with God. That matters to me. So hear me when I say this. I want your kids. Do I got anybody who kids be like, are we going to children's church today? Like, that's how I want stuff. That's how I want it to be. My kids get out of school and be like, Dad, can we go up to the church? I'm like, come on. And they go in the, the children's room. They be playing the games and everything. Upstairs at the Boutwell, I'm going to have rods for them. They're going to have Easter egg stuff up there, whatever that's called, yada, 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 yada. Because I want your kids, if I can get your kids to wake you up, and your husband to yell at you and say, hurry up, we're not going to have a seat. That's a good church right there, ain't it? All my fellas, give me a roof, roof. you be mad. I told you need to hurry up. I like sitting on the front row. So hear me when I say this. So that's what we're doing. So next Sunday, we'll have 9 and 1130 where? At the Boutwell Auditorium downtown. You can park in the parking deck. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. I love you guys so much. Let me say this before you leave. All the way from, uh, we got a candidate for Jefferson County probate, Yeshiba Blanchard. Where you at, Yeshiba? Where you at? We love you so much, Yeshiba. Let's give it up for her. She's a candidate for Jefferson County probate, place one. She does so much in the community, has one of the best hearts and best spirits I've seen. We love you so much. Thank you so much for coming to worship with us today. All the way from Lincoln, Alabama, Akira Jordan. Where are you, Akira? We love you so much, Akira. All the way from, watch this, Rock Mound, North Carolina, Jemiah Jones. We're so excited to see you. Hey, girl. I see you, girl. Got that hair swooped that way. I see you, girl. We got Sharon Blevin, Tony Brandon, Angelique Good from Greenville, South Carolina. We see you. Sabrina Moore, Tammy Thompson from Middleton. What's CT? Oh, my God. I didn't even know what that was. From Middleton, Connecticut. Shout for them. Also, Samara Scott from Windsor, Connecticut. What's up, girl? We got Aaron Hazelwood and family from Indiana, Mississippi. Where you at, Indiana, Mississippi? Uh, is it Indiana or Indiana, Mississippi? Okay. All right. All right. All right. Tina, Tony, and family from Silver Creek, Mississippi. Where y'all at? What's up, man? All the way from Raleigh, North Carolina, Danielle Brooks. Where you at, Danielle? And all the way from Huntsville, Alexis Austin. Where you at, Alexis? Alexis, what's up, girl? So listen, that's why I'm believing God for those dorms next door, okay? My dream is that when people visit from out of town, they can check in, and our dorms look like a real nice hotel. They stay at the dorms, walk over to church, go get them something to eat, and go on, on back home. That'll be a blessing. It's taking a lot to get them dorms, y'all. It's a lot to get them. But I got some good news for you. We got a call from the bank. Thursday, they said they already voted, everything's approved, appraisal getting done. We should be closing in 15 to 30 days. That's a good place to clap, ain't it? So listen, I need y'all praying over the next 15, 30 days. We close on that. We're going to start pulling permits, doing what we got to do. And my dream is going into next year, one of those dorms at least will already be fixed. You go check it out, come do what you got to do, and love God, love people, make a difference. Is that all right with y'all? I love you so much. So listen, God bless you, God keep you, I love you. I pray a simple prayer, and it's Lord, your will. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It's in Jesus' name, and everybody say it. I love y'all so much. We are. God bless you. I'll see you Easter weekend.